ladies and gentlemen, we are revisiting this story out of California City. And if you guys have not heard about this story, first, let me tell you, please click the thumbs up, share this stream, because I want everybody to be able to hear this. I want everybody to have an opportunity to chime in. This story really stunk to high hell. Like it smelt like, I don't know if you guys have ever smelt like rotting fish in a trash can. Well, when people email me stories like this, I just sniff them out. I could just tell when something don't look right. You have to understand that this is coming from 40 years of experience with dealing with bullshit. Yes? So when you see things, you recognize things. When you come from certain environments, when you come from, from things and you, and you recognize these things, you're able to call them out a whole lot easier, right? With this particular story, I'm going to tell y'all, I will replay this video. I'm not going to even pull up the uh, the damn news story. I don't even have to read it. All you guys have to know is this. The biological mother in this story had a bunch of children. I think she had like four or five. Okay, let me get her face up on the screen so you guys can see who I'm talking about. This woman, this individual is the biological mother putting on this cry show, right? She's putting on this waterworks show and yeah, people felt sad for her and apparently she must have thought enough people felt bad for her because of what she did, which we're getting ready to talk about here in a moment. But here's the thing. At least two of her children were taken out of her custody for whatever reason. The reason, I don't know yet, okay? Child services has not told me why she lost custody of these kids, but she lost custody nonetheless, okay? So what happens with children like that? Either A, they could go with a family member and be adopted out that way so the family members can take care of the kids while the individual parent gets their shit together, or they end up in foster care, which is definitely what you don't want because it's just a, a cesspool of bull crap, or option number three, they could end up in a foster home and get adopted out. Here's the problem. As a biological parent, if you get your stuff together, make sure that you have a job, make sure that you have a stable home, make sure that you have rooms for these kids, bed, clothing, a way to provide for them, ways to actually take care of them. You have to show the courts and show the, uh, the department, whoever it is that took your kids. You have to prove to the courts that you can take care of these kids. That's the way it works. If you fail to do so, then there's a good likelihood that you will not ever get those kids back. Why? Because if they are able, because these kids need stability. Let's say that first. Let's, let's say that first. We advocate for children first. These children need stability first. Okay? So putting them in a household that seems to be a good place Yes, you want to permanently place them. You don't want to keep moving them from house to house to house to house. And some of y'all know people who can tell stories that they've been from house to house to house to house. That's just how they grew up until they turned 18 and then they got out on their own. It's a real jacked up way to live your life when you don't have a family to call your own. I know that, right? I know that because my mom and dad helped raise foster kids. I've seen these children go through this stuff where they're constantly going from house to house to house. Okay, so when you get an opportunity to place these kids in a good home, it's a great thing for the kids. But let's pause right goddamn there. These kids were placed in this household and now these two idiots, let me see if I can get Tweedledee and Tweedledum on the screen right here. These two idiots, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, these are not only the foster parents, but the adopted parents. And what that means is that they had these kids for so long and they were qualified in the eyes of the law that they were able to permanently adopt these kids, those two. And somehow they said they sent the kids outside to go play and now they can't find them. Two boys. Let me see if I can get their face up on the screen. So you guys can know exactly who I'm talking about. These babies right here. These two boys. They can't find them. 
one would have to ask, how is that even possible if you're being a responsible parent and you can't find two kids that you're supposed to have custody of and supposed to be watching and taking care of them? That's Orrin West and Orson West. We don't know where they are based on the words of the adopted parents. But they gave us a story. They say these kids just disappeared out of, in, into thin air. But there's a lot of people, not only around that area, but around the world that are listening. How many of y'all believe that those parents, those adopted parents, did something either to those kids or with those kids? It's a possibility they could have been sold off for the benefits that they could collect from those kids, babies for benefits, yes, because these ain't their biological kids. Why would they give a crap about them? Number two, maybe they had a short temper one day or over a prolonged period of time and beat them and murdered them. That is a possibility. Third possibility, maybe they really did disappear. Maybe they got kidnapped, but I seriously don't think that that's possible because the FBI came in and did some investigating and the FBI came into their home and took bags. They took evidence. They dug up the backyard. They even took an entire vehicle, towed it, took it. Took their whole damn car, not a piece of the car, not a tire, not a seat. Not their face mask in the car, the whole damn car. Just took it. And one would have to ask, if the FBI is willing to go through all of that, it seems that they probably have some evidence and they're probably just waiting to build a case. Because I don't know if y'all know this or not, but the FBI actually has a very high conviction rate. So if they bring charges against you, you best believe that they have enough evidence to convict you on those charges better than 90%, right? Better than 90%. So I feel that they know something, but y'all gotta hear this interview again. Matter of fact, can I tell y'all while we're even here, this is why I'm redoing this show because we don't need to revisit that part just yet. That's not quite as important as what the biological mom did. We're not gonna even call her a mom, <laughs> this woman the alleged biological mom of those kids. Do y'all know what she did? Does anybody want to take a guess as to what she just did? Like Stephen A. Smith said, she had the unmitigated goal to do something that y'all know I complain about a lot. What is it? Do y'all want to take a guess? What do y'all think she did? It's something that I complain about all the time. Y'all want to take a guess? Time's up. How about I just reveal what that woman did? Want to see what Ryan did? Ryan Dean did? The biological mother of the missing boys? All oh, snaps. Y'all guessed it right. All oh, snaps. Look at what we have here, Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> How about that? How many of you guys are surprised that the biological, this is the update. You want the update? This is the update, just in case some of y'all did not know. The update is that the biological mother is now asking for money. She's asking for GoFundMe money to get supposed legal help, legal counsel. She is asking for a grand total. If y'all can see this, I've got my whiteboard up here. She's asking for $15,000. Do y'all see why I have this t-shirt on that says babies for benefits? Babies for benefits. How many of you guys are shocked? As you can see right here, it says the, organ the, uh, the organizer is a person by the name of Ryan Dean, 
who is the uh, biological mother of Orrin West and Orson West. She's asking for attorney fees of $15,000. <laughs> now, some of y'all might look at that and be like, well, you know, maybe her kids are dead and maybe she needs that money for something. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Do you guys have any idea why you cannot put up a GoFundMe and ask for attorney fees with a situation like this? Does anybody have any idea? Uh, let me see. Who said that? Ami, Ami R is actually really, really close. Ami R is really, really close on this, okay? So look at what Ami R wrote and follow that. That means that she's assuming that the boys are dead. And you cannot assume the boys are dead until you have what? Bodies. It cannot be ruled as a homicide or murder or anything else until you have bodies. Just like one of the cases we had in Houston, Texas, that's exactly why they weren't able to get uh, the charges in that case because they did not have the bodies. But here's what you also got to think about. Why are you more focused on, like, who are you going to sue? Who are you going to sue? And why would you sue before you find your kids? Don't you think that maybe she should be exerting all of her efforts into trying to find the boys? Huh? Well, here's here's the thing, uh, Tanea, because to, I could actually address that. You, th you believe that she wants custody back. I'm going to tell you why she don't want custody back. Because the mom hadn't seen those boys since 2018 which is how the adopted parents were able to adopt the boys because the mom made no effort to get them back. All we got to do is follow the logic trail. That's it. So that's how I can say with absolute certainty, the mom did not want these boys back. So she can't be suing the, suing for money for, for, for custody. They don't even have the boys back. They don't have bodies. They have nothing. So there's nothing to sue for. Because I want you to also think about this. What if somebody actually did kidnap these kids and the, and the uh, adopted parents didn't know any better? They didn't know. What if they got kidnapped? Then that means you can't sue anybody and you would have gotten $15,000 to do what? Don't y'all think that's a little bit insensitive? Y'all try to call me insensitive. Not y'all, but... People that email me sometimes in my comment section try to say that I'm insensitive for the way that I describe these people. Why don't y'all think that's insensitive? The fact that she's asking for a whole $15,000 and nobody even knows what happened yet. $290 is $290 too damn much. She should got nothing. She should have never put up the freaking GoFundMe. Matter of fact, I want y'all to think about this. How can she put that picture up of her kids or, or what used to be her kids and ask for money for kids that she legally does not own anymore? Oops. That's why I need this dose of keys today. We got to get right today. I'm going to say that again. How can she ask for money on behalf of children that she does not legally own anymore? Brownstone Jen got it. She lost her parental rights. Now tell me that's not a hell of a revelation in this story. That's my update. That's my update. 
But let me go ahead and show you guys. I'm going to re-show y'all these interviews because I want y'all to see why I'm so upset and why I said that this was bull crap from the beginning. Let me give you guys the fair usage. Let's get it. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use. It is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. Let me uh, address what you said. I'm reading the chat and we got uh, 700 people here. If y'all would click that thumbs up, try to get us to six or 700 thumbs up, please. But let me address what Jasmine said. Jasmine said, um, what did you say? You said she still has some rights. If you know what rights she has, Jasmine, post it in the comment section, sweetheart. I'm telling you, she legally does not have any rights to those kids at all. This is coming from experience. I know what I'm talking about. But if you know what rights she has, please tell us in the chat. I'm not getting on to you. I'm not getting on to you. But if you feel like she has some rights, please tell us in the chat what you believe her rights are. Because she doesn't have any to those two children any longer. Let's get it. Well, Alex, I can tell you this, speaking to the adoptive parents was incredibly telling as for the first time since the kids went missing. They're telling us exactly what happened from their perspective. Now, it's all you were saying she was allowed supervision. No. That's before the kids got adopted. She has zero rights, no rights. While they were in the foster process, she did. But once those kids get adopted, she no longer has any rights to those children legally. Y'all can look it up and that's okay. Yeah, you're, you're good, Jasmine. I, I, can, I can appreciate y'all putting your, your thoughts and feelings in there. That's okay, but look it up. I can promise you I'm right about that. Well, Alex, I can tell you this, speaking to the adoptive parents was incredibly telling as for the first time since the kids went missing. They're telling us exactly what happened from their perspective. Now, it's also important to mention that the community here, a lot of neighbors told me that the parents have been virtually absent from all search efforts, raising a lot of concern out here in California City. But the adoptive parents told me that's because they've been busy with the police investigation and that police told them that they don't need to be out there searching because there's already an uh, adequate amount of people doing so. I came in the house, I saw them there, went in the house, I came back out, I didn't see him now. Trezell West details the moment his two adopted boys, three-year-old Orson and four-year-old Orin, went missing Monday night from their California city home. Moments before, West says he was gathering wood to start a fire. I went up to that gate, I'm throwing wood, bringing it inside the house. My wife's inside. She was actually wrapping gifts, so we thought it was a good idea that they got our youngest to go outside and play with chalk on the back patio. Shortly after, Wes says he no longer saw the boys on the patio. He asked his wife, Jacqueline, if she saw them. She said no. That's when he says panic set in. I realized that I left the gate open and I panicked, came inside the house, searched the house, me and my wife. Once that hadn't pan out, I got in the van I looked down the street, both directions. It was and I want y'all to pay attention to his body language. We're only going to revisit a couple of these videos. But let me address somebody who in the chat posted what I believe to be 100% factual information. Let me read this. It says, after an adoption process is finalized by the court, both birth parents lose all legal rights to their children. This means that a biological mother will not have the right to make important life decisions for those kids. They lose all legal rights. Those kids become somebody else's legal property. But again, look at his, look at his arms folded. He's rejecting energy. He's blocking energy. That's, that's a bad body language when you're talking about trying to explain something and hope that people believe you. Watch his body language. And I panicked, came inside the house, searched the house, me and my wife. Once that hadn't pan out, I got in the van, 
I looked down the street in both directions. It was getting dark, getting cold. West said he then called the police within minutes. Since then, California City Police, the FBI, and the Kern County Sheriff's Office have been investigating. Police searched the couple's home Tuesday night, then interviewed the couple at police headquarters. Meantime, multiple search efforts were launched, which continued Wednesday, including with the help of the boy's biological mother, Ryan Dean. She says she's worked hard to get her life on track and wanted to get custody of her boys back eventually. But now she thinks that will never happen and is blaming the adoptive parents. They did something. I feel like they did something and they know something. They did something and I feel my kids is somewhere around here. I can feel it and I feel like they're in the house and I feel like they did something. Trizell and Jacqueline say they understand the frustration. He thinks you guys did something. And that's understandable. What's your, what's your response to that? That's understandable. I would think the same thing. Yep. I mean, that's exactly the point. And if we can find our, find our babies, then guess what? That's, that's no. And that's all I want is to find our babies. That's it. Some residents and family members of the boys would also get involved during the interview. Y'all was supposed to take care of my nephew. But the West are standing firm as the search efforts continue. We're going through. I don't like how that woman yelled at them saying, y'all supposed to take care of my nephew. You want to know why I don't like that? I said it in the last stream. But the reason why I didn't like her yelling and screaming that is because if that was, if that was your nephew, then maybe you should have took care of your nephew. These people don't have any blood ties to those kids. Maybe you should have took care of your nephew. That's no. And that's all I want is to find our babies. That's it. Some residents and family members of the boys would also get involved during the interview. Y'all was supposed to take care of my nephew. But the West are standing firm as the search efforts continue. We're going through it. It's difficult. I, I mean, everybody's making their own assumptions. You know, their own conclusions. And I want y'all to notice, I got a couple more videos before we start with our other two stories. That the mom, from what I understand, I could be wrong, but the, bi the so-called biological mom didn't participate in searching for her boys. All the while, she's asking for this $15,000 GoFundMe for legal fees. I want y'all to think about that. She didn't help look. She's not currently helping look. But she sure is at home typing up this GoFundMe trying to get $15,000. Now, let's get back to this damn story. Let's get it. They don't know anything. We don't, we're not sure, exa like everything, we're not sure. We, we said what we knew. And now back out here live, I should say that the tension in this community is just raising by the minute. Right now, it seems like there's some kind of makeshift memorial candles and uh, balloons here on the east side of me as if something they know has already happened to these kids. Now, I should also mention that the California City Police and various agencies were back out here on the scene again today. And they're Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight for 23BC News at 11. I'm Alex Bell and for Jessica Harris and a search enforcement is used and angry and so is the biological mother of the boys ryan dean they've been missing since 5 p.m yesterday which is i don't understand i don't Mom. understand <laughs> there go the waterworks this is the so-called biological mom ryan dean look at this the one that just asked for $15,000 in GoFundMe and can't even substantiate why she needs the $15,000. I don't understand. <laughs> Dean says that imagining her boys are gone is a nightmare. She says that she misses them every day and is heartbroken that she isn't in their lives. Dean hopes her children are okay and that she will be able to soon see them again. If they find my kids, can they just give them back to me? Whatever I have to do to work on it, to get them. I'm, I have a home, I have a car, I have a job. I, I have money, it's nothing to provide for them. But why did they take your kids to begin with? Why are you asking for $15,000 since it's nothing to take care of your kids? If they find my kids, can they just give them back to me? Whatever I have to do 
to work on it to get them. I'm, I have a home. I have a car. I have a job. I, I have money. It's nothing to provide for them. I don't come. I come from a good background, as you can see, and I don't understand. I just want my babies. If they find them, just give them back to me, please. If they took your kids from you because you definitely posed a risk to your kids, why would they turn around and give you your kids back? How does that even make any sense? If they find your kids, put them back in your possession when you spent two years and didn't try to find your kids. You didn't try to go get your kids in two years, but if they find them, you want them back in your custody. That's that's dumb. But y'all tell me what you think. That's all I want. If they just find them, I just want my kids back to me. Whatever they want me to do, I'll do it again. For my kids. I just and she said it with an attitude. She said, I'll do it again. Like, you shouldn't have never lost custody of your kids. What the hell? So they okay. 23 BC did speak to the biological father. Let's skip to the next one. All right, thank you. Two toddlers last seen Monday in California City are still missing this morning. 23 ABC's Kristen Vartan joining us live in Cal City this morning with the latest on the search efforts there. Kristen? Guys, we're almost at our goal. We want to have an average about a thousand people here, but we need more people to click that thumbs up. We're almost at 400. Can we get 600 thumbs up? 200 more people. Click that thumbs up. It'll help share the stream and let more people know that we're live. I want to hear what you guys think. Do y'all think she's full of crap? Don't let what I say move sway what you guys think. If y'all think that y'all believe the mom and she deserves that $15,000, go fund me. Even though I just sent out a, uh, a notice to go fund me to flag it down. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> Because why are you asking for money and you don't know what a, where your damn kids are? $15,000, though? Yes, we are right outside of Orin and Orin West home, the three and four year olds that are missing. And we spoke to the California City Police this morning and they said there has been no update at this time. Now, their foster parents, of course. Like, who is she going to sue? Ghostbusters? Because you can't sue anybody until they, you can't sue them for wrongful death. You can't sue them for anything. The parents. Kids did not like them. I could tell. Visit. I could tell. I could tell when my kids like someone or when they don't like someone. I have two older kids. <laughs> and I'm, I know. And. <laughs> y'all notice she says she has two older kids that means she had four kids lost two of them four kids and lost two of them how responsible is that let's flip the question around how irresponsible is that to have four kids and you lose two of them so that means you lost those kids for a pretty damn good reason and I'm not saying that she's the blame for the dis. Well, yes, I am. Yes, I am. She is the the blame for the disappearance of these kids. Because if she never lost custody of these kids, then those adopted parents, Giselle and whatever the other whore's name is, would have never been able to get custody of the kids and adopt them and use those kids for the benefits that they could collect from those kids. She never should have lost them from the jump. Everybody make mistakes. Every no, nobody perfect, ma'am. You already weren't doing well with two kids. Then you turn around and have a third and a fourth. What about my body, my choice? Is this not my body, my choice? You chose to have these kids and keep bringing them into the world, bringing them into the world, bringing them into the world, bringing them into the world. You had nine times four months to think about this every single time that you laid down with a man. Why is getting dick from a man? that important that you continue to keep getting pregnant for nine months sorry but i gotta keep it real why is getting dick that important i don't think my dick is that important <laughs> to continue to keep putting yourself 
further and further into poverty. I got one that I'm going to blow y'all socks off with right after these videos. Y'all y'all don't go nowhere. Didn't like them. Something was going on. I got a theory that's going to blow y'all out the chat. Officials did confirm that a police and community. Well, it's been a very busy two days here in California. Suddenly, they just disappeared. And that's all I want is to find a baby. Sit. Trizelle and Jacqueline West are the adoptive parents of the missing boys. One is three-year-old Orson West. The other is four-year-old Orin West. They are going to be here in this area. It all happened at around 5 p.m. on Monday. Trizelle West says the boys were playing with chalk on their back porch. He went outside and opened the back gate to gather wood for a fire. The mother was inside wrapping Christmas presents. I came to the house. I saw them there. I went to the house. I came back out. And I didn't see him there. West says he searched inside the house and the whole backyard. I realized that I left the gate open and I panicked. That's when he drove around the neighborhood calling their names and talking to neighbors. So then I came home and I told my wife we need to call the cops. Uh, it's getting dark and I need help. We gotta get going. California City Police and dozens of locals searched the area for the kids Monday night and all day Tuesday. But the parents stayed inside their home. And I wanted to thank you guys that night, but we couldn't go outside. The cops told us the best are out here. The best are out here searching. Police say the parents have been cooperative. Yesterday, they went willingly to the station for questioning and later were released. Police took their phones and their four other kids away. Detectives got a warrant last night to search the house and they... Yes, they said four other kids. That means... Six children in total were in their possession. Let's not skip that. Which is why I'm getting ready to say what I'm getting ready to say right after this video. To the parents' white van. I understand. <laughs> Ryan Dean is the biological mother of the two boys. She and the two biological fathers of the children came to the house today to figure out what was happening. And I just had to be here. Because my babies are supposed to be missing from this house, so I need, I just need to be right here right now. She's been putting up flyers with the boys' faces. I, I thank everyone so much. I appreciate you guys. I never thought, a lot of people, I never thought that I would be in this situation. All right, are y'all ready for my theory? We got over 800 people here. I think I'm ready to give y'all my theory. Don't forget to click the thumbs up, okay? Please click that thumbs up. Here's my theory. Because this one is going to blow y'all socks off. You got to remember, we got two scenarios. One, where the biological mother lost custody of the kids. And, by, and scenario number two, another couple ended up getting the kids out of foster care and ended up fostering the kids and then adopted the kids and legally became the biological mother and father of those kids, meaning the biological mother lost all her legal rights to those children. That's what we're looking at. So I have a thing called babies for benefits, right? Here's why I'm gonna, I'm going to light the candle on top of this shit cake. Y'all ready for this? The biological mother again, put up, a $15,000 GoFundMe page allegedly well no it's not even alleged because she says it right there it says for attorney fees for classic and sincere attorney fees how would the kids even have a just never mind anyway she's asking for $15,000 and hoping there's about 100,000 dummies out there that'll give her this money she's hoping People will get their heartstrings plucked and give her $15,000. Don't put it past these lying ass adopted parents because I think they're lying. I think everybody's lying. Here we go. Don't put it past this slow ass looking mother, even though she looks like she's slower than a bottle of molasses that's been left outside in the freezing cold. 
Don't put it past this slow mother to collaborate with these fake ass adopted parents. They might have conspired together, working together, because you can clearly tell that neither one of them gave a crap about these two boys. Conveniently, these so-called adopted parents were wrapping gifts, which is the perfect alibi to leave the kids outside. Allegedly, that's your story and you're going to stick to it. And somehow they disappeared. Oh, that's a, that's a great story. Is it not? Great alibi. Don't put it past all three of these assholes that none of them cared about these kids that they might be willing that if this whole thing goes the right way, that she might get $15,000 and might break them off half of it. Maybe she gets $15,000. Maybe she raises the GoFundMe, hoping that more people will feel sorry for her and she'll ask for more money. Or, or what if the adopted parents turn around and open up their own GoFundMe? Now everybody's getting paid from these boys and nobody has a reliable explanation as to where the hell they are. First and foremost, we need the body of these boys because I believe that they're dead. Or we need to find out who they allowed to take these kids. I'm telling you, with all the stories that we did all of 2020 and the beginning of this year, I just don't think there's much hope that these boys are alive. And especially when you put up this heinous ass GoFundMe. Yes, I believe that more people should feel like this thing should be reported and flagged down. I mean, I don't know if y'all want to do that or not, but if y'all do, I wouldn't blame you. I personally don't believe that she needs any more money. There's no reason to give money to people that are being irresponsible because you don't teach irresponsibility by rewarding it. Ooh, did y'all catch that? Did y'all catch that? You don't make people responsible by rewarding bad behavior. Isn't that the same way that we should raise children? Because it don't seem like these adults have learned that. It's a very callous thing to do that in this type of moment. GoFundMe should have been the last thing her fat ass should have been worried about. And because of that, that's why I'm calling this out. That's why I'm doing this update because now I believe that this thing, I think it stinks even worse. I think that makes this even worse. But I promise y'all, if we find out what happens, the AFC and me and everybody else are gonna be, matter of fact, they got a whole, matter of fact, can I give a shout out to the Facebook group? The, uh, the Orin and Orson group on Facebook. If y'all have not subscribed to that group, they are constantly posting updates in that group on Facebook. Look them up. And they were nice enough to share my video in their group. So I want to say thank you to y'all for sharing my content, sharing my video, so more people can hear about this story because I believe that we absolutely need to get justice for those two boys because they were too small. They cannot speak for themselves. And these boys could not defend themselves against the tyranny of their biological mother, their biological father, and not even their adopted parents. God only knows where these kids are and just put a prayer hands up in the chat that hopefully we can find them or find their bodies. But we need something and we need closure and we need it soon, okay? Hopefully the FBI found something and maybe they'll let us know soon. I'm DJ Just J with the AFC where we advocate for children first. That's our first priority.